It's Twickenham, but not as we know it. DJs, lasers, fireworks, all the toys have been pulled out. The home of English rugby all dressed up for a premiership dance. The rugby clearly the main event, but this is more tonight. Twickenham always more. This is a show. And here are the two sides. A couple of changes to the Quinns pack from their defeat at the Gre uh, Breck, I should say. Both in the back row, Dino Lamb drafted in at blindside after recovering from injury. Will Evans restored in the number seven shirt. The front five left unchanged. Karen Smith again at halfback. And a new centre partner for Aster Hazen in Oscar Beard. He's stepping into the injured Will Joseph. And one new face in that back three as well. Cameron Anderson making his premiership debut on the left wing. All change in the cherry and white front row this evening. In come Ford Robinson, McGuigan and Gatopset to spearhead a scrum that's otherwise left intact. Gloucester thrilled to be able to call upon their leading ball carriers like Ruan Ackerman, Zach Mercer. The same also true of Adam Hastings out of action for so much of the early part of the season. Now fit and one of the successes of that second half against Northampton last week, even allowing for that last kick. Seb Atkinson stationed at inside centre. His namesake Charlie arrived from Tigers this week, of course, and that back three really should be enough to frighten the Quinn's defence. Well, when you get a pre-match show like we've just had, you hope the rugby lives up to it, and two players out there should deliver the fireworks and the light show. The two number eights go head-to-head, -head, potentially battling for an England number eight shirt. Stombrandt against, against Mercer, we're sure to see more fireworks. Well, for me, it's the two 12s that is my head to head. We know what we're going to get from Andre Esterhazen. A truckload of experience, power and ability to hold defenders, creating space for others. But for Gloucester, it's Seb Atkinson. He's at the other end of his career, but 21 starts in the last 26 games shows you how important he is for Gloucester. And I'm really excited to see how he goes this afternoon against one of the best in his position. Well, the players for the time being cocooned from the mayhem outside. But what a day for each and every one of them. A special venue, a special crowd, a special occasion. Some, of course, will know this place well from their outings in a white shirt. Some will come to know it well. But for many, this is a rarity, Ben. It's a treat. It's an occasion to soak up and enjoy. It is, and sometimes you hear coaches and players tell it's just another game. It's not just another game. It's an amazing atmosphere. You're lucky to be playing in it. Don't try and downplay it. Bring the best in yourselves out by soaking up this atmosphere as you come out. Obviously, you've got to keep a lid on things, but it's exciting, Tom. Yeah, definitely. I, I think the one thing, and there's a couple of things that have been said in the build-up to this game, is that players can become slightly distracted by what's going on, and you can understand why, but it's incredibly important for these guys, both of these teams are a really crucial part of the season, to make sure their minds are on the job. Yeah, distractions are all around. Not just for the players, potentially, this afternoon. Adam Hastings, absolutely pivotal for Gloucester, who are right up against it at the moment. Ninth in the table, edged out by Saints last week. And now without a league win for two long months, and it all started so well. Rounds one and two, victorious. They were at the sharp end, but the wheels have rather fallen off in the campaign. And George Givington now desperate for a lift. Challenge Cup, really their only respite. Two from two in that competition, but it's time to turn it on in the Gallagher Premiership. And so to the Quins. Led out by Alex Dombrant. And an occasion that unquestionably has been earmarked for some time by all of these players and all of their fans. They walked across the A316 from the Little Stoop, not that long ago, accompanied by their fans. Special days.
Danny Kerr, the veteran of 14 big games. He's played in every single one of them. Tonight, number 15. And you can just see by the look on their faces how much they're reveling in this occasion. Sure, there's business to attend to, but this, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think that's what you want as a player, isn't it? To be involved in these occasions. Not very often you get the opportunity to play at Twickenham, but to, be, to do it for your club with the guys that you work so hard with throughout the season. The real privilege for these fellas, but there's an ultimate result that both of these teams need. A really important day. You mentioned, Ali, that you know, the players that have never played here before, it is a thing, not, not just because of the atmosphere, but just because of things like hearing your teammates on the other side of the field when calls are being delivered. So some of that experience will be important. It'll be difficult for the referee as well. You know, playing in this atmosphere certainly can affect things. His communication with players. Time to bring up the lights. Big game 15 at Twickenham, demanding big performances from Harlequins and Gloucester. Time to step up and show the wider rugby world exactly what the Gallagher Premiership is all about. Adam Hastings for Gloucester. Don't drop the ball. <laughs> Taken care of by Harlequins. Okay, and Danny Kerr. Heart rate, no doubt, pounding. On the first box kick of the afternoon. Hanging and claimed by Gloucester. Stephen Varney's over it. And Hastings. Brings in Ruan Ackerman, just one of those ball carriers that the Cherry and Whites have missed so much in the early part of the season. That's sloppy from Gloucester. Marcus Smith has it. Options almost too many for the number 10. Instead, Nick David accelerates and keeps things simple. Advantage over for the knock on. Marla. First trundle for the loose head. Allegedly retired from international rugby. We're not entirely sure if that's true or not. Here's Tyrone Green. It's been magnificent at various different moments in this season. Scored some spectacular tries. Big shot coming in from Kirill Gotovsev. Dislodges the ball. And this is Oscar Beard. Paired in the centres with Esther Hazen tonight. No Will Joseph available. Smith with an advantage until that kick. Carreras. Searching for space. Smith taking aim. Greasy conditions. Still the drizzle falls. Holding front, lost the weight. Varney's kick, oh. taken in by Tyrone Green. Carreras again drops back. Probably sensibly not choosing to take Taking that on the full with his hands. Green will attack. Mercer bearing down on him. Seb Atkinson too. Marla, Smith. And away they go. Thump through by Anderson, the debutante's a really good kick too, the chase is strong as well. Carreras He's under inside. pressure. Keeps it in play, long passage of play this one. Smith sizing up the options again, off. looking for the territory this time. Yeah! Tidy. Yeah, that's a great yeah. kick from Marcus Smith. But Gloucester's just got to be really careful, they don't turn over too much ball. That's twice they've coughed up, coughed up the ball in these opening three minutes and for a team that wants to try and build confidence in the way they're playing the game that's not the start they would have wanted they just feed the beast marcus smith always standing at the back waiting for those moments tyrone green as well poor kick chase a little bit too long kick and then they'll hit the accelerator and go at you right now looking good and esther hazen looking good inside the gloucester 22 just doing what he does setting that target here's launch free on the carry as well running into mercer a couple of men who'd love to be in consideration for the Six Nations with Steve Borthwick's England. Quinn's on the attack, working that short side through care. Walker sent backwards by good tackle from Harris. Here's Marla though, taking on Rizami. And a penalty advantage in behind the Quinn's. 
And a lovely short line keep going, keep going. from Will Evans, well, but the ball goes forwards well, always with that advantage. Harlequin's playing really, really narrow. They've obviously decided with the conditions and the wet ball early on, they're going to tighten up the game. Just Number Esther Hazen right on the far wing as an available crossfield kick option with all his height for Marcus Smith, but everyone else trying to play tight and through the middle. It's really difficult in these conditions. One of our pitches doesn't quite do it justice. It's been heavily raining prior to the game, and both of these teams, with the players they've got, would have wanted a dry ball, but you have to really be focused on your precision, get that one job at hand completed, and then move on to the next. Harlequins just where they want to be. And Dino Lamb providing them with the ball. Jack Walker is poised. Down by Quinn's at the front. Step. Okay, use it, Danny. Nick David hugging this near side touchline. But for the time being, they're keeping it tight. Care. Skips into position. Quinn's again folding around the corner each time. Stefan Lavis carries it on. Will Evans. Bundled. First man on his feet. Big tackle ball. from Jamal Ford Robinson. And Gloucester turned the ball over. Big defensive effort. And Mercer's looking to buy another meter or so. There's not much change from that tackle. Okay, please, George McGuggan with a huge turnover. Harlequin's just starting to get some fast ball. They're lethal five out with that quick Make sure you're on ball. Nice. Don't hold anyone in here, use it please. Gloucester know they have to put people into the breakdown, slow it down as much as possible, but McGuigan with an absolute lifeline. I've been really impressed, just even in this opening five minutes, Will Evans dealt with getting absolutely clobbered by uh, Jamal Mark Ford Robinson and Zach Mercer, but also been really That's in over the ball. It's a brilliant tackle from Mercer wasn't it because he knocked the man right back over the ruck to the other side where his support wasn't almost fell towards McGuigan Let's see if you can organize a new jersey for number five as well it's got blood everywhere well we isolated it earlier on but the the matchup between Mercer and Don Brandt is is oh. mouth-watering and a, a big broad conversation to be had about England's number eight Ben whether it's Mercer, whether they stick with Billy Vanapola, obviously Tom Willis has been out injured recently, Tom Curry's out injured, Alfie Barbary's in the mix. The, the thing is, it, it de depends on the rest yes. of the back row, getting that balance, yeah, we were having the conversation the before, Ali, but you know, do, you need, do you want someone that's a good line-out specialist as well as the ball carrier, or are you happy with someone like an Alfie Barbary, but then you probably need a slightly taller six, oh, with Courtney Laws really ruling six, himself man. out. It's going to be a fascinating, Thank not you. only those individual positions, on, but also the makeup of the back row and the balance that they get. Walker towards the tail. Great competition from Gloucester, they've got it. Spike Marler's now. best efforts. You're inside, you've got scrum advantage, you're inside. No, no, they're inside. Advantage over. Tyrone Green. Waiting. Strong chase from Thorley. Oh, horrible ball to collect. And Gloucester on the counter now. Have an opportunity. Hastings to Seb Atkinson. Keeps it alive nicely. Well, some very sloppy handling from the Terry and Whites in these early moments. A lot of balls have just hit the deck. And Oscar Beard has grabbed this and has set off for the try line all on his own. Chris Harris tries to get over it. Oof. That was touch and go. Chris Harris thought he went straight for the ball. Uh, Adam Leal, the, the referee, thought first, otherwise. I did see his hands touch the floor. I think he had a little dabble at the ball first. They've gone quickly, though. And they're working it wide. And Danny Kerr's on the move. And Esther Hazen, too. And here's Nick Davids. An early strike for the home side. Well, it's a brilliant score for Quinns. Gloucester just caught napping. They're, they're more worried about what was going on in and around the penalty that was given against Chris Harris. It's all about awareness, though. And Quinns so dangerous with ball in hand. That's what they're built for. That's what they look for, even in these conditions, able to exploit the opportunity.
Look at that, just walking with their backs to the ball. Danny Kerr bringing in two or three defenders, keeping the ball in two hands, and it's a good finish under pressure for Nick Davis. Look at that, in and out. Great score. Just know with Harlequin that that is their intent, and as a defensive unit, you have to be as soon as a penalty is given, regardless of where it is on the field and the usual options a team might take, you have to get back in position, have to be facing the right goal. way, and to be that slow in getting back for, for Gloucester eight minutes into the game, I think there's going to be some questions asked about the team, but brilliant from Harlequins to take the opportunity and create what was a, a fairly easy finish at the end. Just grazing the outside edge. Just Smith. wanted to... With, obviously, it comes from the Harris penalty, which he didn't agree with. We haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Really good tackle from Barney to get back. Harris clear release here, his hands sort of go on the, on the floor just by the shoulders, don't they? And then he goes forward for the ball. So let go, has one dabble, then he goes again. Referees don't like that. I think that's a, a really reasonable penalty to give. A hammer blow to Gloucester early on. Yeah, you want to celebrate this, the success and the, the excellence of Harlequin's execution, but that, that is very, very sloppy from Gloucester, Tom. Well, you know, you talk about precision with ball in hand and under the conditions and handling and things like that. They're the things you immediately think of, but actually it's precision in your mind as well. Where are you mentally? Are you, are you that switched on? Is everyone um, focused on the next job at hand there? Gloucester went to sleep. The basics as well. If Beard doesn't place that ball a long way away, it's turned over by Harris. It's a really good basics to allow his team to play. Sam Atkinson not quite in tune with Adam Hastings and Marcus Smith very nearly got the fly hack away. And you'd expect, I, I suppose, the that 10... 12 axes to take a little time to bed in with Adam Hastings so recently returned from injury. It doesn't really feel as if Gloucester are on the same page as each other at the moment. Thorley in hot pursuit here, trying to find a way through the traffic and Tyrone Green working those feet. You mentioned the traffic that Harlequins ran to protect Tyrone Green. Absolutely perfect, because it gives him a free catch in the I end. Just watch here I think as they converge. They're all running back four, towards the ball. Like no problem there. You saw Marcus Smith glancing over his shoulder. Sometimes that can give it away to the referee, but he doesn't change his line dramatically. And just protecting. And they win a penalty, and they get the field position again. It's become an art form, that, Tom, isn't it? Well, I think the bloke next to me has done that several times. He's <laughs> quite difficult to get around as well. Well, he's lolloping along chasing it back but it's really really key to making the fullbacks job much easier another quick line out from harlequins who are keeping gloucester on their toes here esther hazen gets the put pass away dawn brand thundering onwards smith pulling all the strings walker the inside ball and then dino lamb not too far away from scuttling free george mcguigan's tackle an important one Smith again, Quinn's doing what they want at the moment. Esther Hazen fires it through and good pick up that one from Varney. Green. Thought about the kick, decided to run and Nick David has been absolutely clobbered by McGuigan. Ball is loose. Varney, oof, that was... Should we just call it very flat? <laughs> Cross goes the kick, Reese Zavitz onto it, opportunities here for Gloucester, oh. Hastings! What a score, Ruin Ackerman with the deaf little yeah, chip, and then he follows up in support, it's a worldie of a score. Bruce, can you hear me? Referee just can't hear me. Sorry, yeah. I'll, being I'll contacted I think yeah. by the TMO. Yes, yeah, Stuart Terridge. Is doing that job this afternoon. I'm not at all sure that this try is going to stand. Started with a brilliant tackle from McGuigan and then the, the turnover. The okay, and then just watch this little chip through from Ruin Ackerman. They're all on side there, but it's the pass. That's okay. 
And then it's just that last one, isn't it? For Hastings from Ackerman. Oh, was it that one they want to look at? Yeah, it's that I think one. that starts backwards and almost curls with the, with the spin, doesn't it, forward? It curls with the spin, but also Stephen Varney's moving back towards his yeah. own goal line yeah. at the time. What I also like from Ackerman. I mean, as a forward who's going to kick this, Adam, you'd almost think he's going to sit there and admire his work, but he actually follows it up. And on the inside... It's a that. fine, fine kick from Hastings. A little glance over, a slightly anxious glance. Gloucester in front. Well, look Lovely nudge that. As he makes that kick, he's the one that gets the inside pass from Rhys Zamet. Brilliant piece of work from Ackerman. What I loved it was the way he shaped his body as well. He didn't just keep on the same line. He actually shifted to go directly in behind Reece Summit. Inside, so if Reece Summit wasn't able to get it away, he would have been able to clear out. But he's in prime on, position to take the ball, move forward and offload to Hastings. And Gloucester in front, despite being on the rough end of most of the opening 13 minutes or so. There'll be a number of Harlequins fans who'll be very disgruntled by that decision over the pass. However, the officials are happy. And Rowan Ackerman displaying some skills that perhaps a few people might not have thought in the middle. he had in his locker. Yeah, stay in the middle, thank you. Another good grab from Dino Lamb, but... Interference in the air from Gloucester. Always the frustrating that. For no, I just wanted to hook her in the middle. The fence for Gloucester line out jumpers you, when you get up alongside and you are genuinely going for the ball. Oof, look at that, right into the corner. But you get done just for hooking the arm at the last second. Just off the line. Slight bit of panic, I think, wasn't there from Marcus Smith, but he's absolutely oh nailed that. Probably I didn't see it as a dummy for this. Helped just, slightly. It doesn't mean you can grab his arm in the other. I mean, he's gone straight at the pin there, hasn't he? <laughs> Extraordinary kick from Smith. So that one small blemish against Gloucester in the line-out has led to this position for Quinns. And they will like the look of what's in front of them here. Defended once. It's with Jack Walker. In comes Don Brandt. Gloucester ushering them towards the touchline. Care back in the other direction. Esther Hazen ploughing onwards. Seb Atkinson doing a good job. Marla rumbles on. Over the ball goes Ludlow. It's still there for Care though. Uh, the attempted intercept from Alamano has gone forwards from Gloucester. He's going for it with two hands. Scrum Quinns. Quinn scrum. So there's actually a similar incident here at the last line out, but because it doesn't really affect things, they, they play on. But this is how difficult it is for a jumper going up because if it was an open play and two full, you know, a full back's going up and both of you are at hand level and you take a hand, you don't get penalised. He's genuinely going for the ball there and nearly gets it. And there's the end of that little knock on. One either way. It's such a big decision as to whether to compete, Ben, isn't it? Because the, 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 the margins are so fine. Exactly. By the time you realise you're not quite going to get the ball, it's too late and you might make contact. You've just got to be really careful with the, the hooking action as you land. As you come away, you've almost got to take your hand, move it away from the ball rather than just leave it there and land. Well, Danny Kerr will be drooling. At this situation, five metres out, bang in the middle of the no, no, pitch, the and options so left down, and right. It, it's such a difficult binds, area of the field up. for Gloucester to defend. Both sides, no space in behind them to buy them time. They have to get off the line and make good decisions first up. There's no second opportunities here. Quinns, over the last couple of seasons, been the best team at scoring. First phase off centre field scrums, Marcus Smith with that drifting across the field, the little hitch kick that he likes to employ to make defenders make a decision for him. Left or right, left or right. Risa. There's one man who'll be uh, very much hoping the answer to that question is left. 
Come on, guys. Cameron Let's go Anderson working. making his premiership debut today at the age of 24. Just his fourth appearance for the first team. All the others have been in the Premiership Cup. He's been applying his trade to excellent effect with London Scottish in the Championship. And seemingly every time anyone from Quinns goes to watch him, he's the best player on the park. So in the absence of Murley, and with uh, Lewis Liner left out this week, it's Anderson's opportunity. Will he see the ball here? Okay, use it. Heading to the right. Danny Kerr takes it on. Smith, little pop for Tyrone Green. Can't quite get it away. And Gloucester scoop it up, but they'll take the scrum to start with. Brilliant defence from Harris there. It's high risk, high reward. But if you hang off and delay at all, Marcus Smith will make a mockery of you. So don't give him time for that little hitch kick we were talking about. As soon as he gets it, bang, you're in his face. And then make sure the man outside you is on the same script. He comes in and you take away all the time for the handling. I actually think it's a knock on the other way. Because I think Thorley knocked the ball backwards and then Chris Harris went to try and regather and knocked it on himself. So perhaps Quinn's. Slightly okay, hard done by, but I agree, Ben. I still you have think to get off the line, and there's no work, space. Though, okay. If you look here, as Green goes to chuck it out the back, there's a, a trademark about, shot from Thorley. Really good thing about that defence as well was how Crouch. Harris worked with the man on his inside Atkinson so Atkinson has to stay for the big frame of Esther Hayes and they stay really well connected till the last possible second then Harris flies through gets to Marcus Smith Mercer from the base good power okay use it please Stephen good meters as well from a standing start he's got his team 10 12 meters up the field And Varney's clearance gives them just a, a little bit more breathing space. Don Waldock will be happy with the way that's unfolded in the last few minutes, five metres from the try line. Defence has been at the core of their concerns. Second worst defensively in the league, statistically, but holding up under good pressure here at Twickenham. Care. Once again, the show and go. Nobody can hold on to him. Nick David's in. The maestro. Every single week, Marcus Smith turns up. Well, in this game, it was all about opportunities for players, and that player there, Marcus Smith, he's got a massive few weeks ahead of him. And how better to show that you're on the top of your game than a, a break like that siding break you can't give him any space he's so quick he can embarrass you and he's done exactly that there so dangerous when you we talk about connection in defense and that was just slight disconnect lack of communication what defenders on the outside slightly ahead of those on the inside that's where you lose the vision and marcus smith look once he goes you're in real trouble yeah, it's a no brilliant finish or break from Smith, isn't it? Harris, who we've been raving about his defence, will be really disappointed. Just got conned on that pump pass, that little pump dunny. If he stays for Marcus Smith, Marcus Smith can still pass it, but just this little hold here, what are you going to do? You've made my decision for me, you've showed me your shoulders. And David, as you'd expect, it's someone that plays alongside Marcus Smith. You hang around his shoulder because yeah, you know you're going to get an opportunity. Attack is about, as much about enforcing your game as, as making defenders make decisions for you. Uh, I on. think that's what Marcus Smith is really good at. He's, his ability to hold the ball in two hands, use his footwork, all his physical attributes, as well as his game understanding. It makes the defenders opposite him make decisions, that's and then he's got the ability to execute those, those skills. And, and the other thing it can do, if you don't make a decision, is you start hesitating, and then that's the worst possible thing. So it's just all those little pump passes, those little movements that 
just take the eyes away from the defender and go, well, what are you doing? And just make him question whether he's made the right decision or not. My goodness, he's in exceptional form at the moment, isn't he? He really is, as Costa dropped the ball again. That's and holding on, coming back, lost Harlequins forward. will be able to regroup just inside the opposition half. And he's gone through with, between two high-quality defenders there, Harris and Ackerman. Well, that's the dangerous position for Smith to play, isn't it? Second receiver it means he's got yeah, a bit more time. He can away, expose you guys a of that gap higher, in between Ackerman and Harris. I think Esther Hazen did a great job, actually. Turned his back right at the last moment, which meant that Ackerman just ran straight into the back of him. Added half a yard of space for Smith. Bath sliced open last week. Gloucester this. Man of the match in two of his last four. Surely Steve Borthwick can't do without him. Somewhere. Let's not forget he played at fullback the last three times for England in the World Cup. This is Green. Advantage. Marla. Smith again, just waiting for the runners. Collier arrives. A little wider from Smith this time to Esther Hazen. And beyond the 10 metre line, they go through Anderson. Care. Oh, that's cheeky. And Dombrant read it beautifully, and Dombrant's away. That combination, so special. They're just on the same wavelength. There's a telepathy, a special chemistry. Care with the boot, Dombrant with the try. Well, that's the electronic sure Danny Kerr. You don't think he's actually going to make this breakdown. He gets pulled away from it, last minute, pops in. And as he picks the ball up, it's just all about the speed of ball, so he hasn't made the decision. He knows that Don Brandt is always alive to his little short kicking game. Here's Danny Kerr coming from in front of the ball. Now he comes up, little eyes up, spacing behind, running away. No, none of those defenders think he can get that little chip over the top. Outside of the right boot, and as we've said, Don Brandt so alert to the mind of Danny Kerr. Starts through, still got some work to finish this, brushes off his opposite number, Mercer, and accelerates for another stunning score in this game. Well, it's a brilliant finish, but really what stood out for me in that head-to-head -head battle was just the way he dispatched Mercer. All good, Stu, you still there? Whenever there's a way of sending a message no, to your opposition, mate. that'll be it. Get off me. I'm coming through. Tough pill for Zach Mercer to swallow, for sure. And Harlequins just finding their authoritative edge, although not through the boot of Marcus Smith at the moment from the tee. The one area of the game that isn't quite measuring up to international class, you would argue, just at the moment. I think the major strength for Danny Kerr, obviously he's got the skill set to kick, but it's the way he scans the field oh, and he sees oh, where the space is, sees where the opportunity is. You just saw his eyes there. It's okay, just that on, calmness that I've got time, I know I can back my own skill set. Where's the space? And he finds it so often in this league. Real feel on that nudge as well, wasn't there? It was a, dare I say, it was a, it was a footballer's touch. Well, sometimes when players run across the field like that, you, you say, well, where are you going? Thank what are you, you doing? You know exactly okay, what Danny Kerr's trying to do. He's please. trying to make defenders bite Start in. Outside, and as they came in, there was the, all, left all the space in behind. Here's Carreras. Surely one of those that George Skivington will be looking to to spark something here for Gloucester by way of a response. Little nudge this time from Hastings. That's really delicately placed. It's, it's beautifully done. It's been Ooh, knocked forwards by Quinns and then played in an offside position, so Gloucester what, with Was it a deliberate knock-on from Tyrone Green? I, look, I, I didn't see I it as a deliberate knock-on, but it was played by a man in front. That was the question that Hastings was just asking. It was a knock-on by you, then played in front. I don't know whether he's definitely going to take this. If this is a pass, would you have given a deliberate knock-on? There we go. 
Another little chip over the top, space for either side. He's not, there's no there's chance. No way he's taking that. Is he taking that? That's a Thank deliberate you. knock on. That could have been a yellow card for Tyrone Green. Shades of Maradona. <laughs> he probably shouted, not in my house. <laughs> he came and knocked it away. Adam, hold the ten. We'll hear from uh, Nick Evans, the That's Harlequins attack right. coach, in just a moment or two. Let's see how this Gloucester line-out plays out. They need something badly here. His Mercer goes really wide and it's clung onto by Seb Atkinson. He's brought down by Evans. Quick ball, though, for the Cherry and Whites to work with. Stopped on the gain line on that occasion. Varney probing. Clark now drives into care. Mercer again. Ludlow and McGuigan for company. Varney just desperate to keep that tempo high and stress the Quinn's defence. Now a bit of width on the ball. Atkinson, Hastings to Carreras. Good tackle made by Anderson, a really important one. Sorry, sorry, Joe, okay. We slam it. Plays nine. Hastings and Harris and width now and Carreras. Again, well tackled. McDavid's challenge that time. Mercer, Hastings, flat ball for Robinson's missed it. And the moment's gone for Quinns. And Danny Kerr gives that as much as he can. Inside the half. Carreras chasing his own kick. In comes Green. Oh, and he's lost Two it. Carreras had it. Had it for a moment. Two knock ons. And uh, we'll head for the scrum. Let's bring in Nick Evans, scrum. the Harlequins uh, attack coach. Lovely to have us with us. Uh, lovely to have you with us, I should say. Uh, Nick, t tell me about your uh, your thoughts after the opening half hour or so. You you've had a, a blistering start and some terrific tries. Yeah, no, we. Um, I think we've. we've Pretty much stuck to the game plan where, where possible. I think we've just we've just offered them in, in invitations into into our 22 and around that in our half a little bit just through our kicking game. I thought we could have been a bit, little bit more patient. Um, not using the word pragmatic, but just been a, a little bit decisive around our kicking game a little bit more. Um, it, you can see errors are, are, are going to be a factor in this game. Um, it's a, it's, she's pretty slippery out there, so. The more pressure we can put on um, Gloucester down in their half, um, you know, they make a few errors down there and we can hopefully capitalise on that. You mentioned the conditions, all the more reason to celebrate your nine and your ten, given what they've come up with already. Yeah, I know, they're brilliant. Um, I think if anyone comes and watches us train, um, you'll see exactly that. You'll see Danny do that. Um, you'll see Marcus do that. So, um, look, I, I think it's a pretty, pretty good start. Um, you know, we'd like to be a little bit further ahead on the scoreboard, but um, conditions are going to be tough. There'll be an arm wrestle, um, parts of this game that, that, that we'll have to endure, um, but uh, it's been pretty good and the crowd seems to be enjoying it. I've got a funny feeling you're going to be hearing about that nudge later from your scrum half. <laughs> yeah, I think so, mate. Yeah, you'll be wanting more of that. Brilliant. Thanks for your time, Nick. No worries. Thank you. Appreciate it. Disappointingly, Harlequins have lost Stefan Levis to injury. He's gone off clutching his elbow. James Chisholm, who's come on, who's been fantastic for them over the last couple of weeks different sort of player Dino Lam will probably move up into the second row now we've seen a lot of him there which is not sure how pleased Gloucester will be to see him he's been an absolute menace at the breakdown in combination for the rest of this evening's game with Will Evans Gloucester are going to have to be absolutely razor sharp at their own breakdown Set. now stay high you two Reese Zammett for Atkinson, Hastings feeding Reese Zammett who's round on the loop and Thorley, lot to do here for Thorley, he's bust through that first tackle. Varney, Ackerman, little pop pass, he's working really nicely in and around the ruck at the moment. Can they convert? Plenty of time spent in this area of the field. Not a huge amount to show for it to this point. Now then, potentially some width and Reese Zamet is held early. Marcus Smith making the tackle. Mercer juggling and staying on his feet so well. 
Hastings, Ackerman, Atkinson, oh brilliant, got it away to Carreras, Thorley's running the inside line, that's a fine, fine tackle, brilliant from Beard, Carreras denied. Oh, it's a brilliant tackle and you have to pay as much attention to that tackle as you do from the lack of understanding just from Thorley as Carreras comes across. There's a gaping hole on the inside, just drop underneath. Carreras just backed himself to get to the corner and just tied up. It's really poor defence from Harlequins. They get too narrow in midfield, all the forwards, Concertina, and then they just keep some depth out the back. You think Carreras has got this absolutely nailed on for a finish, and Oscar Beard, having had to step in and follow his forwards, bounces back out to the wide channel and makes an absolute certainty of a try-saving tackle. Stunning. Well, the little hand, hand up off the floor, on. just an acknowledgement from Santiago Carreras. He knows that ball probably should have been dropped underneath. Thorley with a big bust. With a player like that coming on at pace, there's no way you're going to stop him from that distance. Joe Marlon's right elbow so receiving um, that, quite a lot that's of that's attention. This, this is what I was talking about, the Harlequins forwards get concertina in the middle. Just watch them all, they all start coming in and they're easily taken out. Look how many are together there now. And that means the Beard has to come follow them in. And then he realises that David's come in as well, so he has to race back out to the outside. That is top-notch defence. Yeah, he's covered it for about eight, eight of his own teammates there. Brilliant work, the determination on his face to get back. Yeah. Absolutely there for all to see, wasn't it? It was a look of total grim resolution. This is not looking terribly promising from a Quinn's perspective. That's Finn Baxter, he's the man covering loose up. Please his coaches, efforts like that from Oscar Beard just as pleasing as scoring up the other end. He wore one on the end of his nose, I think, from Nick David when he came in, but really great work from the young inside centre. Just probably needs a few more consistent appearances to under his belt, game after game. Mm. Russell looking to make the most of this and uh, hustling and harrying, but the, the line-out from Quinns was awry. Line-out option. Nightmare having I mean, worked so straight. hard to keep them out. You then gift them an opportunity with a not straight throw right oh, over the top. Mark, yeah. Go for what oh, should that. be the easier throw, Numbers. unmarked. And it's definitely six. Okay. That it's runner six coming from his own try line. And now, can McGuigan be more accurate with his dart? Just feel for Gloucester's state of mind. Nice. I count seven here and one receiver. They've got to Who's take got something in? from this. Seven man. Well, they're a team that aren't great at converting every time they get into the opposition oh. 22. Reese Samet at the back of this line out. He's waiting. It won't count for anything this time because Quinns have got their hands on it. This is Chisholm bursting forwards and offloading. And Jack Walker trying straight. to do similarly. Couldn't have been better. It was definitely off Harlequins, off the boot. Quinn's ball, yeah. Not only do they get 20 well, we metres up the guys, field, so we've got to check. we can't just let you go. They'll get the throw in. Uh, it's Harlequins ball. That's your mark. Thank you. Connor O'Shea watching on. Now, uh, key part of the RFU. And of course, at the scene of. One of the club's greatest triumphs, the Harlequins Premiership victory of 2012. The mastermind of that particular vintage, and Joe Marlow was at the core of it way back then. I think that arm's getting a, a strapping. A handful of survivors from way back when. Some of them playing like 18 year olds. OK, time on, please. Oh, enjoying retirement, Wayne. <laughs> it's going to be Buffalo, please. Oh, yes. <laughs> More. 
Launchbury taking care of business at that line out. Defended once. Inside the 22. Wingers on. Freely gathers. And Gloucester have got work to do to get back in place. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Criminal. Thank you, SU. Yes, you. Probably happily find himself at yeah, this point. Yeah. <laughs> Ludlow with line out ball for Gloucester. Hastings running onto it and spotting space in behind. David oh, chasing chase. back, tricky bouncing ball. Yeah, good chase from Gloucester. Pressure on Tyrone Green from the in goal area. Great hustle from Gloucester. Much more like it, much more energy. What a brilliant angled kick yeah, here. Everyone expecting it to go to the left-hand side of our screen, puts it back over the top, and look I'm at that four-man right kick chase, out. really That's good. Does it get a hand here? Is it half-charged down? No, really good kick pressure as well, perfect go, opportunity boys. now for Gloucester. Can they get this line-out sorted, though, having missed the last one? How many, Lewis? Lewis Rees Summers going to be part of it, again. Ball in seven. He loves that. All eyes on McGuigan here. To the front they go, More. to Alamano. And the rumble is good. Mercer at the forefront of that charge. Quinn stemming the flow just in time. Great secondary response from Quinn's Esther Hayes at the heart of it. Need to get that ball secured, Gloucester at the back, not get too far dragged in. Intent on this getting done by the forwards, Gloucester. Brought down by Gloucester in the eyes of the referee. And Alex Dombrant happy to lie all over it as a consequence. Just lacked a bit of patience there as we saw it start to spin in towards the posts. They accelerated through, but they allowed the Harlequins' bodies to get in behind on the ball. They don't have to get out as long as they don't change their bind, the Quinns players. So they roll in towards where Zachary Summit was stood. They get some momentum. Really good counter here from Quinns to get them moving back. But then they just get a little bit carried away with the white line in front of them. Allow Don Brandt to stay in on the ball and he just shapes his body so there's no danger of it coming out. It doesn't have to roll away, it's not a ruck, it's not a tackle. He can stay in there, it's a failed maul and Harlequins get a chance to clear their lines. And those stats illustrating just in clear detail the difficulty that Gloucester are having in converting their pressure into points. Got a decent surge on at the scrum, and Dombrant's under a little bit of heat. Smith's clearance is very, very strong. So good for a team to be able to rely on a player like that when you've got such a narrow angle to be able to get that far up the field and relieve okay. so much pressure. I think we're going to need to make a sub for number one. He seems to be injured again. You know, it doesn't look as if Joe Marlow will be playing a great deal more of a part this afternoon. What's happening? Substitution for number one. Marlow's coming off. The man who's had a decent season. Finn Baxter just 21. He's um, been starting quite a few uh, games, five of them. For number one, he's injured. To this point, and very highly rated. Some of you might remember that exceptional match he played against Racing last December. <laughs> Came out as man of the match. <laughs> Not too many 20-year-old props as he was then do that against a a big French scrummaging unit. Ludlow again, delivering it on a plate. Carreras feeding Ackerman. The ball is there to be won, and it's Baxter who's first to it. And they've got a big overlap here if they can work this, Quinns. Costa just about getting bodies into space. Tricky bouncing ball for Carreras. And the ball is blocked, and Rizamit just about scuffs it away.
desperate times for the Cherry and Whites. They're just about hanging on, but Quinn's applying so much Quinn's pressure ball. to that man there. Massive impact contribution from Finn Baxter straight away. Dombrat, a pest at breakdown. And then it's kicking on your own terms and kicking into a position where Gloucester That's have to play it. So easy to just drill that ball into touch. Make Gloucester pay it, apply pressure to them, come up with a ball. It's the risk when you, when you have that first phase play off the line out. You've got Ackerman and Mercer, both viable ball carriers themselves. But as a result, no one in there to clear out. And leave Ackerman slightly exposed. Quinn's hunting a bonus point. That's the highmost point, lads. Just six metres away from their fourth try, Dombrantz sets it there for care. A little rummage from Jack Walker. Gloucester having to dig very deep here. Ford Robinson holds them up for a short time. Dombrant flicks it away. The ball is loose. Mercer thinks there might be something on. Carreras. Still under advantage. We'll see what happens. Must Sorry. have been very much in two minds receiving that one. You're on the scrum advantage. OK, use it. Playing with the knock-on advantage until the Varney clearance. And Gloucester can exhale. Oh, Don Brandt does really well, Mercer, to hold on to him on the floor, but... It's that physical nature that Harlequins are probably just edging at the moment. They make the knock on, they make the error. But every time Harlequins carry, they just seem to be making a few more metres in contact. It's a lot harder for Gloucester, it's a bit more stagnant, a bit more stationary when they've got the ball. I think it's also really difficult. Go through that point in a sec. Yeah, to Smith, to David on the inside channel. Care yeah, again, they just ramp up this ruck speed. When they hit the opposition 22, Quinns, but this has gone forwards a little bit too eager. I know those, those stats we're talking about, particularly the ones at the bottom, post-contact metres. I know they're making metres all over the field. They're winning the game line. Nearly double the amount of metres when that tackle comes in, staying on their feet. And that means you're going to get quicker ball. You're going to get much quicker ball. The opposition are all having to backtrack, so the line speed all goes. So it means the knock-on effect is the next phase, you win more metres. I think one thing there, if they are winning that battle, they don't need to make offloads that aren't 100% on. Dombrant in that position just previously, offloading a 50-50 ball to Finn Baxter, which hit him in the face. It's, it's not something that you want to be doing to a prop two or three metres from the line. Just go through the phases, you're winning that area of the game, so continue with it. Will be, yeah. Bind! Set! Clock in the red. Gloucester, you feel grateful for half-time, just about in touch. Quinns have been running the show, though. Nick David scored twice, Alex Dombrant scored another, and Marcus Smith has been exceptional. Danny Kerr, too, enjoying himself in the 15th big game of his long career. And at half-time, Harlequins lead Gloucester by 15 points to seven. More lights, more lasers, but at the moment, still the same old Gloucester at Twickenham. It's been a sorry tale. Failed to win on their last eight visits, and they've suffered some thumping defeats here over the years. The English Cup final of 1990, conceding 48 to Bath. The 03 Premiership final, conceding 39 to Wasps. The Prem final of 07, conceding 44 to Leicester, 50 to Cardiff in the Anglo-Welsh Cup final. They've got to find a way out of this hole, out of those horrible statistics. And just to okay, use it, please, add to their misery, the knowledge that Harlequins have been beaten only once in 12 here at Twickenham. But we have seen some decent second half showings from the Cherry and Whites. But Marcus Smith is in the mood today. And he's doing as he pleases. Inside the 22, a full 40 metres upfield he's moved. And then the ball is knocked on by Gloucester. Quinns will set up camp in the 22. 
And this bloke, right now, almost untouchable. Well, it's great pace again from Smith, but it's disjointed in terms of the kick chase from Gloucester. Shows you how quick he is. Rhys Zamet was really struggling to catch up with him. Let's go, lads. Little step. On, it wasn't really going anywhere, but they Let's kept jump. hold of the ball. Just the awareness of, of what's happening in front of you as well, because Will Evans was naturally running a line that was going to block, I think it was Hastings from getting out. That's what opened up the gap. So he throws that big looping dummy and then just accelerates and Hastings bangs into Evans, just gives him a fraction of a head start and he gets through. Just feel like the reaction from Marcus Smith suggests he was just really hacked off, he hadn't gone all the way. Those are the expectations from himself. And a full blown penalty from the scrum off the back of it. So Harlequins continuing the motion in this second period, beginning with great purpose. Gloucester collapsing under pressure. And the referee giving you an indicator as to exactly how this match is playing out. Really nice well, drive these, building this, isn't it? A big run, follow it up with a huge scrummage to give you a shot into the corner. Can you convert for the best possible start to this second half? Mr. Hayes in a big part, this close. You see Marcus Smith just trying to work out what will happen if the forwards don't want this. Oof. Three players left the line out and we're in a position to push way before the ball was thrown. Gloucester off the hook. It's something we've been told no, no, by the referees. They're going to be hot yet. on. Coming right out of the line yeah, out the and then too, yeah. before the ball's even thrown in, that allows you to almost run in and give you that momentum for a drive. It's something the referees have become aware of as a tactic across many teams and they're going to clamp down on it. Just to be clear, Ben, they can do it as soon as the ball's left the hands yeah, of the hooker. They can leave the line out, but it's just where... What they're looking for, the referees, is that as a trigger, is when the player is standing, waiting, and then they accelerate. If it's all in one movement, they'll let it go. Don Brandt showing up really well today. Here's Jack Walker, cut down low by Ludlow. Smith gathers, feeds Chisholm. On for Levis, remember. Great big paws all over the ball. Chisholm and Esther Hazen getting it away. Don Rant delays the pass. Dino Lamb steaming onwards. What a finish! So much power and no little pace from the blind side. Hurt himself there, Dino Lamb sliding in, but this is really, really good. They might just check, I think, the pass from Esther Hazen to Don Brandt, because they'd overrun him slightly. But it's a really, really good control of feet to make sure you don't go too far. You can see Don Brandt just overruns it, backtracks slightly, which allows him probably in the eyes of the referee to get away with it. I'm sure they'll check it, but the finish and Don Brandt's hands I saw, you see, I just won them. And I know we get camera angles and things, but those hands look like they go forward slightly to me. Uh, I'll just have another look at it if you got it. We need something that's really clear. Not clear and obvious in the eyes of the officials. Smith converts, and Quinn's taking a really oh, firm good. grip on proceedings I've here. Oh, what I really like about that score from Quinn's, everyone is an option. Everyone's running hard at the line, they're flat, making it really difficult for defenders to move. That's probably one each, is it? Gloucester the scored in the first half of one that was flat. Maybe that's the level up. But look at this, everyone's an option. Launchbury causing havoc. I think that's Jack Walker. Yeah, it looks much, much worse on that angle than it yeah. did on the, the first angle we saw. It's a benefit of the doubt thing, isn't it? Yep. As you were. And because the camera was directly behind the player, it, it did look unusual. Gloucester having a little moment here. Dino Lam has injured himself yeah, in the act of scoring. It's another shoulder injury, isn't it? That's what Lavis went off for. So they've lost to both their second rows. Well, the man that replaced Lavis in the second row, Dino Lamb. Might make the line out a little bit more difficult. Well, lost to having a little bit of a huddle. I, hope, I wonder, just, they're just thinking, Are we if we huddle down here long this? enough, they'll have yeah, a look at that pass in the TMO, but okay, they've already discussed it. 
Well, the try stands. Oh, well, they have got an extra body to come off in Ernie Herbst in the second row, but he's not the lightest, and neither is Joe Launchbury, so they're not the most athletic second row pairing to win a good load of line-out ball. Well, it's very unfortunate for Dino Lamb. George Hammond, another harlequin who'd injured himself in the act of scoring. It's not clear and obvious, so it's a try. Not long ago. We only do in the clear and obvious, as you know. And that, of course, was the bonus point score for Quince, number four for the day. So Herbst for Lamb and Beard giving that a good hoof. It's a horrible stat for Gloucester. We've talked about their defence, but every team in this league, aside from the Falcons in Newcastle, have scored at least three. And it's really difficult to build yourself a solid platform when you're leaking tries like that. Yeah, it's six try bonuses that they've conceded in the season to date Gloucester as Hastings springs in Carreras, who involves Mercer. Tough for that Mercer, he's never going to go anywhere. Ball given to him as he's slowing down and stopping. Danny Kerr with a big hit coming in, just has to be careful with the height when he accelerates in and goes from low to high there. Not often you say that about Danny Kett. <laughs> That's coming from one of one of the similar small people. Still under the foot, it's carried back into the half there. They're just reading everything at the moment, aren't they, Quinns? Everything that Gloucester throw at them, they seem to have it under control. Tyrone Green has got that too, and he's slipped under the tackles of two defenders. Baxter. Not on the ball. Oh, from Marla, remember. So, three separate injuries for okay, Marla quiz today. Marla, Levis, and Lamb. The collateral damage quite significant. Still another month to get through before that breather for the Six Nations. Attacked back by Cameron Henderson. I've got nothing clear, lads. Walker. Smith lying deep, just buys himself a little bit of time. Freddie Clark happy to oblige to the right. Boys in. And that's probably not his best touch of the day, Marcus Smith, but it'll do for the moment. Yeah, almost too much time to think about that, did Marcus Smith. He read the play well covered the space and now Gloucester they really do have to try and make something stick here 40 meters out 30 meters out from the Quinn's try line and the aim of the game is just to keep hold of the ball at this stage well Reese Zamet once more part of that setup and he's tracking on the inside here and it just seems self-evident one of their match winners, they've just simply got to get him more touches. Ackerman for Gloucester. Atkinson. Varney to Clark. Dab forwards from Hastings. And a very calm Anderson drops on it in the end goal. Difficult thing tactically to change there, when Mike. you train okay. in a certain way, but all Gloucester's forward carriers that, are sorry? very, very flat, very I close to the Harlequin's defensive line, and because they're not getting any purchase, it means the defensive line's on top of them. So all their big pack carriers like Mercer are taking the ball and getting hit straight away, standing still. I just wonder whether someone needs to say, let's go back a little bit, let's have let's players go, careering onto the ball and try and get some momentum like that, rather than trying to stand still and almost have a pushing match. Let's get people hitting lines really, really hard from a bit more depth and see if we can punch a hole and then we can go back to that flatter forward carrier. Well, here's Mercer from depth, but he's running to Chisholm. Hastings. Alamano. Not without experience out there. Reese Zamet is uh, lurking and waiting and Hastings is delaying the pass and Fawley's there. Ford Robinson, good pick up 
Alamano again on the charge. Harris searching for Reese Zamet instead. Plucked from the skies by Atkinson. And a good counter rock here from Quinns. Is it enough? Good contest, lost now. Alamano, McGuigan's got the right idea, although the tackle was huge from Herbst. No hands. No, 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 no. And uh, Will Evans You're couldn't quite resist. You've got to be on your feet. Right, that, that's something McGuigan was always really, really good at at Newcastle, coming from depth, ticking that line. They pick him up because he's a single runner on his own, really. So they make the double tackle, they win the, seven, the penalty. But just feel if you can get the likes of McGuigan and Ackerman running in combination at one defender who's then got to make a decision, they might just find a little bit more momentum into this game. They gain momentum from those carries, but the next bit is actually a presentation of the ball, making sure that they get quick ball. That's what allows them to get it to the width, to get it into the hands Thorley. of Carreras, Rhys Zamet and Thorley. Now you talk go. about give, giving them the opportunity to play, you have to earn that right. It's so difficult when you've only made 133 metres from your carries. Options here for Gloucester, and um, good pace and a good line from Seb Atkinson. It's there for Varney. Here comes McGuigan again. Good momentum this from the Cherry and Whites. Searching for their second of the day. Need to take care of the ball. Ford Robinson. McGuigan. Poised. Drives. Scores. Something to work with there for the Cherry and Whites. Well, we've mentioned him, haven't we? McGuigan scores the try, but it's actually his initial carry that gets them within diving range of the try line. And he comes from depth with a bit of power and drive, he wins the collision, gets halfway through a hole, nice there from Atkinson, ball off the top, but there we go, comes from a bit of depth, and then a couple more phases, and then it's just about using those front row strengths of staying low, being comfortable, the heights that other players don't have to run around the field and do, and he wins that with his strength and pushes himself over the line. the carry just survives that first contact doesn't he gets underneath Danny Kerr so the gap narrowed Midwigan head down burrowing onwards and now 39 career tries across the premiership so something of a prolific scorer for the clubs that he's been a part of Newcastle Leicester for a short spell of course as well and now Gloucester and for all Marcus Smith's brilliance in this game. Harris' misconversion is going to come back to haunt Harlequins. They have been really, really dominant. Gloucester now back in it after two tries. We'll get the views of Gloucester director rugby in a moment or two. George Skivington as Tyro and Green sends it up. Outside. Space there in front of Smith. 22 is on. Oof. So good. So, so good. Harlequins will have the line out here. Smith very carefully measuring things up. Got the slide rule out. Put it right where he wanted it. Oh, and he, and he took his time, didn't he? Made sure he created the hole. So difficult to execute that skill. He almost felt like it, as soon as he hit it, Turned away, knew exactly where it was going. We're grateful for Joe Skivington's patience, but there will be other things on his mind, no doubt, as Esther Hazen sets the target for Quinns, and Herbs drives on, and Kerr is in! <laughs> Celebrations for a man turning 37 next week. Big moments, big tries, big games. On a line out in this part of the field, you might expect Don Brown to be out in the back, but because of the second row shuffle, he's gone into the line out. He wins some good ball at the front. Not the best place to attack from, they don't care. Beautiful delivery. The ball goes wide.
wide across the front for the big ball carrier who's going to be stationed in midfield, Esther Hazen. He wins his collision. And then it's all about keeping that momentum going with big forward carriers coming around the corner. And as Danny Kerr picks up on the last breakdown, he uses those forward carriers as a decoy and slides through untouched for a brilliant response from Quinns. So a straightforward two points on offer here for Marcus Smith. Let's hear from George Skivington, the Gloucester director of rugby. George, how on earth do you dig yourself out of this one? Well, I think we've just got to keep doing what we're doing to get ourselves down there. You know, when we've actually got down there, we've put some good pressure on and had wins on the ropes defensively. But I think, obviously, you know, Marcus is having a very good game, hitting us around the park and finding space in the 50-22s. And every time we do something, he, he puts the pressure back on us. You know, we've got to be better than that around the breakdown. Because Danny Kerr's too easy for him. We were talking about the gain line, talking about how you could generate a little bit more momentum. It just seemed in the last few moments, particularly exemplified, I suppose, by, by George McGuigan, with your runners coming a little bit more from deep on the angle, you were gaining more of a, a benefit through the gain line. Is that a message you're trying to get through? Yeah, I mean, look, I think we've got to play in the right areas. You know, the first half, we, we played a little bit too much on the halfway line, turned the ball over a couple of times, and next thing you know, yeah, Quinn's scored a couple of tries. So six, yeah. for us, it was more about playing in the smart part of the field, you know, putting ourselves a bit like Marcus is doing to us, basically, put the pressure down on us, get the ball back and then play in those areas. And a couple of times we've done it, we scored tries, been a little bit inaccurate another couple of times, but um, it's a pretty simple game plan we've come into the second half with. We've just got to execute it. Yeah, you're going to need all that belief, aren't you, at the moment? With a big, uh, a big comeback required, and uh, we've seen it happen before. Terrific last week, of course, before being pipped at the post. Thanks so much for your time, George. No worries. Gloucester approaching that Queen's 22 now. Hastings, Carreras on the ball. It's looking a little brighter, a little more promising. We start to use the blind wingers coming on a loop around wide on the, the wrong side of the field for them, and just that pivot pass to try and create an extra man. You're jackling what well, he's affecting the nine by rolling into him. And Amazing. Stephen Vardy would be happy with that decision. Amazing though, isn't it? When you listen to a director of rugby and all up, he really. talks about is one player. All he talks about are the opposition. It's like Marcus Smith being some sort of computer cheat code. You know, you wind him up, let him go. He runs the show. So you talk about gain line success, those two massive carries, it makes rugby simple. If you get that far over the gain line, it means that Danny Kerr can pick the ball up, take his time and make good decisions. It's very, very easy, but difficult to do. Dylan Lewis coming on a tight head for Will Collier. Welsh International replacing England International. And Lewis on red alert here because Ludlow has secured the line-out ball for Gloucester. And McGuigan... Inside the five. He's just beginning to size things up here. That's defended once. Atkinson, Hastings, sends it wide to Carreras. Thorley now, work to do, all the way through the 22. Tap tackled, gets up, denied by Andre Esterhazen. What a bit of work that is from Nick David. Desperate times, calling for desperate measures. Well, we've seen a couple of desperate tackles that have been absolute world. He does really well. Carreras there to drift on the bounce of the pass to get outside Tyrone Green. And Nick David just gets enough of the ankles. Full speed, fully committed. Oh, Thorley will be devastated. It's a great effort from David. And then Esther Hazen doesn't give up flies in and just makes sure Thorley can't place the ball. That's a great tackle. He's a big bit of kit, is Thorley. So to knock him over yeah, it's fine, mate. Oh, yeah. in that fashion by both Nick yeah, David and Esther Hazen is, is, is yeah, a real testament well. to yeah, the effort, defensive well. effort that Quinns have been putting in. We saw Oscar Beard in the first half. It's just repeated by... Nick David, well, that desperation to defend. Okay, they know perhaps right? they've had all of this game being 29-14 up, but somehow Gloucester just aren't going away. Looks like David made the tap tackle with his chin, didn't it? A bit of treatment there. 
Gets a boot in the face for his troubles, but... Tasty matchup this one. Max Llewellyn on the field for Gloucester. He's replaced Seb Atkinson, who'll go head to head with Andre Esterhazen. I think we'll be able to feel that collision when it happens up here in the commentary position. And a new nine for Gloucester as well. Kalen Englefield on for Stephen Varney. So, George Givington looking to the bench at this point for something a little bit different. There's Englefield, has come from London Irish, his first appearance for three months. It's actually his first appearance in the Premiership for Gloucester. Max Llewellyn, son of a, a famous Quinns man, of course, Gareth. Seven man, seven. Long time Welsh international and high quality Harlequin, but Llewellyn against Esterhazen. Something to uh, keep your eyes out for. And we'll be coming here as well. More. He's lost his drive, developing nicely. Dylan Lewis can stay put. McGuigan goes to ground. Uh, Llewellyn standing at, at first receiver here. Leave him alone, thank you. Ready to crash things up. Anglefields for Ackerman. Just no impetus, no bite to the carry. Number four diving straight off feet. And Clark has come off his feet at a crucial moment. And once again, the moment passes for George Givington's man. It's just the physicality of the carry, isn't it? The fact that he has to look up there. Ackerman and not got any momentum into it, so he's going from a standing start, and that means that you're always going to be under pressure as the clear out. It's kind of a wonder he can see where he's going. That is some shiner on the uh, the left eye. Well, he's running in the right direction because yeah. he's coming off the field now. Seven man, but we're holding to the captain. Time off. Time off. We're going to get the captain. So Jack also. Clement with us. And Freddie Clark making way as well, so Cam Jordan is onto the field for Gloucester also. A couple of younger players looking to inject a bit of energy, a bit of life. Clement who began this season in outstanding form. Of course, the, uh, the need for those big carriers glaringly obvious in the early weeks of the season with the uh, the likes of, of Ackerman and Mercer out and Val Rapava Ruskin also still a, a big name absentee Esther Hazen again for Harlequins Herbst Baxter leaves that really nicely he's, he's reloaded his own speed Herbst again, Smith injecting the pace, Don Brandt, the provider, David, oh, so nearly exceptional from Harlequins, Esther Hazen well shackled and Gloucester can breathe again. Carreras like an exocet there coming in, he's just hurt himself Esther. I think. Yeah, just as Esther Hazen got the ball fully committed, but he actually said he's struggling, he's facing away from the defence at the moment. The Brilliant tackle, the, the, because of the quality of Harlequin's ball carrying, they've narrowed up Gloucester's defence now, which gives them the space that they play out of the back, and that's a three-on-one on the outside. Carreras just accelerates into Esther Hayes and manages to make him dislodge the ball. Well, you've got no choice when you're in situations like that. You strap up, and you go flying into the contact. Finn Baxter putting it about as well. Who's his mentor at the club? Joe Muller, is it? Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, no respecter of reputation, certainly. I think that's a look of approval. No, time off, please. No, not, not one of the six was balanced there, so we'll go again. 
It's as loud as I can go. Trust me, I'm, I know it's loud. It's as loud as I can go. I'll try. I'll be as loud as I can for you. Sort your balance out. Let's go. The noise of the the crowd proving complicated for all the players out there it's to be able to hear the referee, particularly the second rows, because they're obviously trapped. Their heads are in there anyway, so it's a bit muffled, even in a, an empty stadium. But you really, because you have to go on the, it's like the beer the bang with the sprinters, isn't it? If you're late behind your block, you get a huge rollicking off the scrum penalty goes Gloucester's way. That's what the second rows always say, anyway. Can't hear. Dylan Lewis dropping the bind that time. And Gloucester needing something sooner rather than later at this point. Yeah, but that's not my job. I need you to be more positive and stay up there. Time off. One and two. Gloucester's Change it hooker for Gloucester. Seth Blake is on for George McGuigan and confirmation of the attendance this afternoon here 76,813 not bad going Alamana feeds Mercer Anglefield does well first blast up the middle from Llewellyn 21. Hastings oh, probing watching carefully Anderson on that on right-hand flank. I haven't really seen him let loose ball in hand yet. Yeah, let go of him, please, Alex. OK, use it, please, Danny. Stay on. Good distance on that from Danny Carras, been knocked on, knocked on by Carreras. Surely. Tyrone Green. Caught well by Llewellyn, it's there for Smith, it's, it's gone forwards for, for real here from Harlequins, and they're appealing because on the far side, surely... Santa Carreras was at fault too. 14 Harlequin's arms pointing back towards this incident. He is. Give Adam Leal the benefit of the doubt. He is falling backwards, Carreras. So, referee obviously felt the ball just drop straight down. But if you drop a catch like that, it's got to be enough. If you hit and stay higher, then I, I yep. think it's a lot easier. Just hit positively and not I think down. you and Santiago Carreras was a bit confused, wasn't yeah, I not? think he knew. He knew. It's a, quite a big shift, isn't it? They've got the ball, Gloucester. Uh, and they are a, a full... Time off, right, lads? What, 40 metres we'll further upfield as a consequence? Silly. I'm going to go straight to free kick if there's any more of this. When I give you the mark, you two set up left of the marks, OK? Don't move again, that's our free kick you. So Jack Walker sandwiched between two new props in Baxter and Dylan Lewis. Lost it with a front row that features Vivas and Blake now alongside Kirill Gotovsev. Bind! Set! Mercer to the short side. Nice little dummy. Couldn't get that inside ball away. Clement was waiting for it. Gloucester not taking care of their own ball. Chisholm sweeping it up gratefully. <coughs> Esther Hazen tries to get it away to Beard. Beard doing some strong work in the contact. Is Hastings. Smith's after him. Inside. Just narrows the angle, but the kick is a decent one from the fly half. Good spin from Beard there, he's Daddy. had a good game. Daddy. Daddy. With the first break. Lewis Rizamek coming off, replaced by Johnny May. Not been his day, really, has it? Thanks for your Not managed to get away at any 
important moments. And big applause all around Twickenham for Danny Kerr. Try scorer today yet again. His 85th in the Premiership, his fifth in a big game. And the crowd appreciative. Porter on in his place, Will Porter. Walker through the game line, through that 10 metre line. Smith with a little show on the inside and Beard smuggles it away to Green. And Quinns, when they're in this mood, just look so slick. Lewis lays it up. And again, they're camped in that 22. Five tries already this afternoon, Harlequin. Smith for David, who surely is after a hat trick. Not this time. Okay, use it, please. Strong work from Ludlow, yeah, disruptive and it, slows it up a good deal. Smith's little nudge through again and once more there's trouble for Gloucester. It surely went forwards from Cameron Lock Anderson. On. But uh, those little probing kicks, it's the range, the variety of the Smith repertoire that is so, so dangerous, Tom. Yeah, and I, I think that's what makes it so difficult to defend, no, especially when Quinns are in a mood like this. Their shapes are good, everyone's an option. Lewis. It almost yeah. feels like everything they do comes out with a positive me, outcome. It's an area of space that they've, they've found all night, isn't it? Let's Just go, go. in behind the breakdown with the two, two rearmost players for Gloucester standing split to prevent Marcus Smith using the touch lines. There has been a bit of space for... Harlequin's in behind, we saw the Danny Kerr little chip for the try. Crouch! Bind! Says need to get off. Set! Quinn's Quinn. It's a free kick to Gloucester. Scrum not quite going to plough at the moment for Harlequin's. That has landed down the throat of Esther Hayes, and here's Tyrone Green. Launch free, clings on. Porter, Smith, Evans. Baxter, tucks and drives. David Court. Walker, Evans again, a lot of hard graft here from Quinn, searching for the opening, and Smith has found it, yet again he's got Donbrun on the outside, brought down from behind by Chris Harris, whips away, Green, Evans, Chisholm, most phases we've seen in the match to this point, Smith, Esther Hazen, David, another good tackle made by Chris Harris. No, 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 no. Quickly to his feet. Baxter, Smith, flat ball across the face of that defence, and Chisholm was reading it well. It was a miracle pass. Gloucester summoning good choice. Excellent choice. energy deep from the death. And Smith slots it. He's got it all. Well, he had it all in that passage of play. There was the little break from himself, and then the floated pass to try and keep the ball move alive. There's the little break goes hard on the line, that little pump pass again, but he has the power to accelerate through. Keeps the ball well. And then eventually comes back to him, not much else on. Oh, just add to the tally. I think what's been really impressive with Quinns is that every, all of the shapes, they're so well understood, whether it be Finn Baxter, whether it be Ern Herbst, they all understand exactly what they're supposed to be doing, which creates space for those players around them. Here's Carreras trying to conjure something for Gloucester. They've got it away to Thorley. Hard running as ever, deep inside the 22. Cherry and White surely done and dusted here, but they need to keep fighting. They need to show that spirit. 
Keeping it alive nicely. Johnny May in a bit of space. Work to be done. Hits the gas. Johnny May for Gloucester. Still fighting. It's not over yet. Well, you know, when you give the ball to a player like that, there's only one way he's going, head down towards the try line. And it's exactly what Gloucester needed, but you just feel it's too late. They've hung on so well somehow during this game. And for them to be in with a shout, this almost has to go over from Adam Hastings. Thirty-two points to nineteen. Seven odd minutes left to play. Well, he's very good on the kickoff, isn't he, Johnny May? Comes off his shoulder, maybe goes forward, but they get away with it. Low pass over the top from Guerreras, and then just that gas to the outside. Nothing Anderson can do to recovery. Just hesitates slightly. Anderson probably a bit fearful of the Johnny May pace. Just wants to make sure what he's doing. Just holds for a beat there, doesn't he? When maybe if he'd accelerated through, but Johnny May manipulated defenders as he's done throughout his whole career. You've just got to trust those players on your inside and put your head down and go straight towards him. It's up to those teammates of yours to get with you. Mercer. And he's got through a huge amount of work, hasn't he? 15 carries today. For Gloucester, but they just haven't found enough punch with enough regularity to bother Harlequins this afternoon. Okay, use it, please. Isolated oh, moments. 16. Okay. Well left. Okay. Straight up. And that's gone out on the full. Yes, the mark, Mike. On me, on me here. On you, Joe. Now. Yeah. Thank you. The clock ticking. Today's attendance at Just a little too much on the angle from Anglefield. Harlequin is looking for another assault. Sam Riley's on, he's replaced Jack Walker at hooker. Had a lot of game time this season. Moore was inside the five. And looking well set. Hiding himself well and then exploding into contact. Porter just delays till there are more bodies ready. Porter, little show. Don Brandt was hoping for it. And they'll keep running those lines. They'll keep offering themselves up. Here's launch pre. Stay on, stay on. Herbst. Sorry, buddy. Back to that short side, and Smith again probing. Baxter lays it up. And they're trying to rummage through the middle. Lovely from Riley. Not too far away. Don Brandt was no, no, agonisingly no, 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 close. Gloucester, though, have scrapped and scrapped and they've got the ball back. Good fight from Gloucester at the end there, really good counter up. Long way to go, though, from here. Still inside, yeah, Less than five minutes on the clock. Stay on. No. Use it, please. Start on, One more try would give them a, a try bonus. And something to take away from Twickenham, but... Their campaign is already looking a very, very testing one. Green for Quinns. Fighting through the challenge of Alamano. Backwards. Johnny May is onto that. Turns and presents, and Clements can't gather it clean. And he had not lifted the ball, so... Player had come firing through off his feet. 
So Gloucester will have an opportunity here. Time for your man of the match, Ben. Well, there's been a few candidates. Nick David has... I don't know if it oh, it's gone out. Nick David's had a, a really strong game. Don Brandt, as ever, has been right on the shoulder of all the little breaks. This guy, Beard, on any other day, I think he would have got man of the match, but it's no surprise. He's had everything tonight, apart from his goal kicking, but everything in terms of open play. Marcus Smith, everything has gone through Quinns, we heard. The Gloucester thoughts and how much they've worried about him all game. He is deservedly our Gallagher Premiership. And there is the roar for the Ben K decision. Three and five for Marcus Smith. Three times man of the match in his last five games. Absolutely superb today. Have Gloucester got a try bonus point in them? Clement breaks away. Mercer. Whips it away. Seb Blake. Just a little bit short. Short of numbers here. If they can get quick ball. Gloucester. Lots and lots of players out wide. And the attempted intercept, or was that a straight up slap Might down a for a yellow try. card? Might be a penalty try this. Yeah. We need to look at. Yeah, mate. So, hold for me, please. Definitely a uh, yellow card. See, I'm going to TMO this. On field, I've got a deliberate knock-on by number 15 going for it with one arm. I just want to check there's no cover in the backfield because I'm definitely on yellow card, but I just want to consider whether okay. it's a penalty try as okay, well. OK, so you, we're running here. Look, you can see he's clearly the last man. Last man, yeah, yes. Last man. Be a penalty try and yellow card. There's going to be two points so in this for Gloucester. Card. That's, a, that's a, a big, big decision. Surely the right one from the officials. Tyrone Green goes to the bin. That's all seven points to the Cherry and Whites. They have their try bonus. They're within losing bonus point territory. And having been, broadly speaking, played off the park, they could be losing here with two, but there's still a couple of minutes left. One of them match a little early. Goodness. Yes, a little bit. Of meat left on the bone. Yeah, he's going time's well, off. Arguably, anyway. okay, time he could on have now. got a yellow card earlier on in this game. There's no way they could call anything else but Gloucester. Possession is everything. Mercer. He won't give up the fight. Englefields. And wide they go. Carreras. Beyond the 22, slowly but surely. Clement. They have to do it the hard way. They've not been able to convert the power plays when they've got an extra man. Worst Harris in the league, at it. But... Mercer, what a tackle. Really, really strong. That was Cameron Anderson, I believe. Huge shot at a really important moment, just stemming the flow. And interesting, the option from Hastings is to the air. Johnny May is chasing after it. And it's Marcus Smith who has it. And there will be a Gloucester line out. I tell you what, there was no cover in behind. No one really coming across for Quinn. So if Marcus Smith gets beaten by Johnny May in the air here, and Johnny May regathers his footing, it could have been the moment to end all parties. I just think that bad. as soon as Adam Hastings kicks the ball, you lose control of the outcome of that play. It's a 50-50. They were getting on the front foot, which they haven't done for large portions of this game. And they had space and numbers. I wonder whether that was the right decision. Is there a final twist here? Englefield through the fingers, but backwards. Clements again for Gloucester. Got to hand it to their resilience. The character that they're showing right now. Still in this fighting. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Remarkably, a converted try wins them the game. Quinn's with 14 men, remember. Harris for Gloucester. Round the outside. Clement straight and true. He's carried really well. 
since coming off the bench. Well, Mercer. Numbers again of Gloucester. Hastings, May, Llewellyn to Carreras. Cam Jordan lurking in this five metre channel, has to go in to clear the ball away. The steal is affected. And Marcus Smith, of course it is, finishes the match. What a show. Quinn's hang on. A big result on the big stage in front of 75,000. The entertainers have turned it on. Marcus Smith at the centre of everything. And some sorry times for Gloucester now. Despite their two points, they've now matched their worst run ever in the Premiership. Eight defeats in a row, surely already out of any top four running. But what a performance from this man. Wonderful stuff. Great to see. And great to see it happening in front of so many. Full-time at Twickenham. Harlequins 32, Gloucester 26.